if I give you the choice to choose between two countries, mm -hmm. A and B, mm -hmm. country A allows you to do all your acts of worship. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it forces you to do them. It forces you to wake up at Fajr. Mm -hmm. Country B does the complete opposite. Would you rather be forced to worship Allah or not to? Of course, uh, to worship Allah. But it doesn't even need to go to that extreme. Just put mm. me in a country where I give you a and ask me what's my preference. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Like, if you ask anyone, for example, that lives in a Muslim country where they're not allowed to drink, let's say, Alhamdulillah, because they live in a country where it's forbidden, mm -hmm. they're not doing it. If you ask anyone who, who's been raised by good parents, he will tell you, you know, I've been slapped when I did this. Uh, you know, my parents, <laughs> my parents they forced me to take medicine. Just this, aren't you going to be grateful? That's a really good point. And a part of the conversation that we are missing here, right? You just said like in Muslim countries, you know, if alcohol is not permitted, then people don't drink alcohol. But what about the people who do get a hold of alcohol in Muslim countries? What do they do? They drink it in private. They, they keep exactly. it to themselves, you know? And I think this is a part of the That's conversation pretty. that people are neglecting. Like, why do governments, again, mm. I'm, I don't want to focus on Iran. Let's just generalize and talk about Allah's law in Muslim lands, right? Let's keep it simple, inshallah. Yeah. When it comes to that situation, like people in this conversation are neglecting the duty on the Muslim countries' governments to enforce that law. Because the law mm. is not just about the individual choice, it's about the preservation of the society. This is Allah, creator. Everything is his. Yeah, exactly. We are his. Yeah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like... Yeah. Obviously, what happened to, in Iran was disgraceful. The yeah. sister who uh, passed away in police custody, mm. all, all I know about it is what's on the news. Yeah. Evidence that she was beaten, the authorities are saying she wasn't. You know, so like we obviously really sympathize with the family and we, we mm. hope that they get clarity and transparency and justice. Islam I guess any is, human being, not just because she's... No, the, no, definitely, you know, definitely. Yeah. Islam doesn't allow the layman to be judge exactly. and prosecutor, you know? Yeah. So um, like that's one thing. Um, but the whole burning hijab, it's sad to see. It, like, it's really sad yeah. to see and it's frustrating when you have sisters online coming out instead of supporting hijab they're doing the That's crazy. It's almost like it doesn't make sense what i find in these situations as an online presence and i don't have anywhere near the following that these sisters have yeah a lot of people mm. almost come at you and say you know you're a muslim woman you have to speak about these topics what my advice would be to any person online that's getting pressure to talk about a topic they don't feel comfortable talking about or they don't have the knowledge to talk about then don't talk about it this is the danger of social media getting famous you either be the influencer calling to allah and his messenger or you're going to be influenced certain topics give me more views if i say this i'm going to get more views more mm -hmm. people are going to love me if i act liberal you know youtubers and dais and Anyone who's using a platform where there is a large audience, we, we cannot submit to the viewers. Like if you're chasing the algorithm is what you're yeah. doing. Yeah, exactly. You, you run the risk of compromising yourself. Exactly.